Assalamu alaikum alaykum guys, uh, how are you doing? Uh, we're going to, in this uh, recording, show the design uh, of a double a reinforced uh, rectangular concrete uh, beam. So, uh, we have a rectangular beam, it must carry a surface life load of 36 kN per meter and a calculated dead load of 15 kN per meter on a 6 meter simple span and is limited in cross-section for architectural reasons to 300 millimeters width and 500 millimeters in total depth. Now, if Fy is 420 megapascals and my F prime C is 22, what steel areas must be provided? Use 522 for tension and 518 for compression steel if needed. And we're gonna use 58 for uh, stirrups. So, to start first, we find the ultimate load, which is 1.2 times the dead load plus 1.6 times the life load, and it's 75.6 kN per meter. And since this is a simple beam, then my ultimate load would be W ultimate L squared over 8, and that will be 340.2 kN per meter. So to decide whether it's going to be W or not, we have to find out first row max and calculating row max which is 0.85 times beta 1 times f prime c over fy epsilon ultimate over epsilon ultimate plus 0 0.005 again since we have a grade 60 then epsilon t is equal to 0 0.005 and that's giving me a 0 0.01419 now in this case since i want to figure out since i have b and h like we did the single reinforcement and i'm going to use my raw formula to find out what my row is going to be according to the B and D that I have. And from that, I calculated my delta to be 0.59 Fy over F prime C, my eta to be phi Fy BD square. And from that, I'm getting the row equal to 0 0.023, which is larger than row max. And then, uh, so I need a doubly reinforced concrete beam. Again, if you don't like to use the row equation, you can use the iteration method, assume some value for A, get the area steel, maybe you have to do two or three iterations, most likely two, from the area of steel that you will have, divide that by B and D, and from that draw ratio, we will be able to discern whether we need a double reinforced concrete beam or not, the design, excuse me. But again, like we said, they need to be a double. Now, in this case here, usually I would like to use this, this equation to find out how much by my D is going to be, okay? So what I will do usually, I will take my M ultimate, and then I'm going to use my phi, then I'm going to use rho max, all right? Uh, I'm going to use Fy, and then I'm going to use uh, my B, and I'm going to keep D as an unknown. Or, okay, I know it's given, but this is, I want to know, According to that moment, how much my D should actually be, okay? If I were to design that as a single reinforced beam, I would like to know what my D would be, and I'll tell you why. So by doing this, I'm finding out that my D is 500 millimeters, which is larger than H, okay? So that means I probably will use a large amount of steel or a number, uh, a larger number of uh, bars, and they're most likely they are not going to fit within my B. So I'm assuming or I'm thinking that that means I will probably will have two layers, okay? Knowing that before doing the design will help me uh, tremendously because once you figure out that uh, you will need two layers and then going back doing the reanalysis sometimes uh, your moment value will not be safe and then you have to play along so if you know beforehand that you can use a two layer instead of one layer that probably will save you some steps it's not necessary if you don't want to do it don't okay uh, it's up to you but for me I found that to be quite helpful so going with the premise that I'm going to use two layers instead of one then I can calculate my D which is going to be H minus the cover plus stirrup, which is 48, minus phi, which is 22, minus, since it's going to be in the center, uh, which and we said that the spacing between the two layers usually is about 25 uh, millimeters, and by that, I mean this, 
so these are the two bars then this is my 25 millimeters so divide that in half it'll get 12 and a half so now this is my d area of steel now it's going to be rho max times 300 times d which is going to be 17 70 70.54 millimeters square so the minute you come to the conclusion i'm going to use a double reinforced beam then your rho is actually going to be equal to rho max so and from that you're going to get the area of steel so once i have the value then my a is going to be area of steel times fy divided by 0.85 times f z times b from that value i'm going to get the value for c as well which is simply a divided by 0.85 now, from that, I can find the nominal moment provided by this area of steel. So this is the 1777 that I found times Fy times D that I calculated minus A, which was 133. From that, I'm getting 262. As you can see, and as expected, it is less than the 340 kilonewton meter that I want to design for. So that's also an added bonus of saying, hey, I'm going to need double reinforced uh, cross section. Now, I know that my Mn is equal to M1 plus M2, right? Now, this is my Mn2, all right, now. So from that, I can find M1, which is my M ultimate, which is the 340 divided by 0.9, to transfer that into a nominal moment, subtract that from it and then we see that the amount that I need is 100 almost 116 kilonewton meters okay so the added compressive steel is going to provide for the additional 116 kilonewton meter now as far as the prime is going concerned again we have the cover 40 plus 8 the phi and then we said we are going to use phi 18 if needed and that's going to be a plus 9 and from that we are getting the 57 millimeters All right now the problem now is okay can i how would i know that my compression steel is yielding okay so in the past what we did we went and calculated rho coi correct and we found that if my rho is larger than rho cy then it is yielding if it is not then it's not yielding but the problem that i have i don't know what my rho prime is because i want to find that correct so yes i know beta one i know d prime i know d i even know all of this but this is my unknown so i need to find something else to determine whether my compression steel is yielding or not okay so what we know we know if my rho is larger than rho bar compression yielding and less than rho bar max both of them will be yielding the compression steel plus the tension steel okay so what i want to find out i want to find the maximum d prime by d in which that the compression steel will yield now, what we know is, we know that this rho CY, okay, cannot exceed rho max bar, right? So this is one of my uh, design uh, criteria. So I'm going to assume that my rho bar CY, or compression yielding, is equal to my rho bar max. It's an assumption, okay? So my rho could be actually equal to rho CY, okay? So in doing this, what we will do is make again rho cy equal to rho uh, max so i'm just re putting the restating the equations here uh, for the uh, ease of use uh, so i'm going to make rho cy which is 0.85 beta 1 f prime c over f y d prime d uh, again plus rho prime so one thing you've noticed is immediately rho prime will cancel out with rho prime and then my 0.85 beta will cancel out with my point at five beta f prime c and f y would cancel out and so with this one so what i will be left and obviously epsilon ultimate as well so what i will be left with is d prime over d times one over epsilon ultimate minus epsilon y and that will be equal to this uh, so d prime over d now is going to be equal to uh, 
epsilon ultimate minus epsilon yield divided by the epsilon ultimate plus 0 0.003 plus Fy over E. So now this is the D prime over D that will determine whether my compression steel has yielded or not. So applying this to our problem, uh, we know that the net tensile steel in our case is Fy over ES plus 0 0.003, and that would be now equal to 0 0.05 since I'm using grade steel, grade 60 steel, FY 420, and we said for that I can use my epsilon yield to be 0 0.002, and which is right here. So from that, my D prime over D now would be equal to epsilon ultimate minus epsilon Y divided by epsilon ultimate plus epsilon T, and that will give me a 0.125. Okay, so that's the maximum value allowed for compression steel to yield. So if my value is more than that, then it's not yielding. If it's less than that, then it is yielding. That's what we're equal to. Now, my D prime is 57, and my D is 417, which is 0.137, and that's larger than 0.125. So my compression steel will not yield. Now, just a side note here. If you remember in the previous example in the analysis, we actually calculated rho CY to determine whether the compression steel has yielded or not. Here you can use the same thing, since again it's an analysis problem and you know exactly what your D prime in D is. So if you don't want to go through that equation, just simply use uh, this right here. Calculate the actual D prime over D, and then calculate it from this ratio, and then this is going to be 0.125, if you do not like to use the rho CY. So you can use the both in the analysis and design, but I needed to introduce that there then, and I'm introducing this here now because we needed it for the uh, design purpose. Okay, so now we know the compression steel is not yielding. Okay? That obviously is going to be an added uh, wrinkle. So now I'm going to calculate F prime S. And that's going to be now epsilon ultimate E S C minus D prime over C. Here I'm going to use the C that I calculated before, all right? And that's giving me 400.63 mega pascals, all right? Now, this will enable me to calculate air prime S, which is M1 divided by Fs D minus D prime. This was the 116 that I needed. This was my Fs, this is my D minus D prime. And this is giving me an area of 803.5 millimeters square. So the total area of steel is going to be the area of steel that is comp uh, that's responsible for the tension part, plus the air prime S times again Fs over Fy. So this is the total area in the tension zone. So for that, since I need 22, I'm going to use 7 phi 22 which is giving me an area of 266, and this is for tension, and uh, B minimum is 259, okay, two layers. So as we expected that I'm going to need two layers, and that kind of I verified my uh, assumption. As far as the uh, compression goes, I'm gonna use a four by 18, which is giving me an area of 1017.8 uh, millimeters square for compression. So now this is gonna be my so this is my design, okay? So now this is going to uh, be transferred now from design problem to an analysis problem, okay? Now, so this is what I'm having, okay? Uh, we said here we had 300. We had... <clears throat> Seven, I guess you have to draw four, one here, one here, and one here, and then we had about uh, four up here. Okay, so since I already know, so now I have to check whether it's going to give me the appropriate M ultimate or not. We already know that it is not yielding, right? So see a D prime over D is still not going to change so that my compression is not yielding. So from that, I'm going to calculate C. So I'm now I'm able to calculate the actual steel based on the A prime S, which is my 4, phi 18, and A S, which is my 7, phi 22. So from that, I'm getting C to be 150.74. And from that, I'm getting my FS to be 391.78 megapascals. And from that, I'm able to find the value for A, all right? Or 
if you do not want to calculate the actual C, just use the previously uh, calculated uh, FOMS, which was the 400.63. It's, it's a small difference. I usually prefer to use the accurate one. So you either use the C that I calculated before, which was the 150, or use the 148.85. It really does not make uh, much uh, of a difference. As you can see that the FOMS now is 388 instead of the 391. So you're talking about 3 megapascal as uh, a difference. Okay. Now epsilon t is going to be dt minus c over c and that's going to give me again 0 0.0558 more than 0 0.005 so my pi is 0.9. So let's just re-emphasize. I don't want you to be confused. Okay. Now in this step here I'm recalculating a new value for f prime s. If you don't, if you want to use the FS or the F prime S that you calculated for the 391, then you don't need to do all of this. Okay, all of this is extra if you do not want to use the 391 that we calculated before. Like I said, this is a little bit less accurate, but again, if you don't like equations, this might be faster for you. All right, because think of it as a method of iteration as well because I'm using the uh, 460 that I calculated before and I came up with a new C and that, that gave me a new 388, all right? Okay, so again, if you do not want to use the uh, equation for finding out C, you don't need to do this, all right? So moving on now, I'm going to calculate uh, the value for phi. Then, as you've noticed, I used the values for C directly. I did not use the one uh, before uh, because I used the 391.78. Okay. And from that, I found my M ultimate, my nominal uh, my M ultimate to be 372, which is larger than the 340.2 kilonewton meter. Now I'm going to check my raw max. It is larger than rho. Again, it's a design problem, so I would like to enforce that in all of my new uh, designs. Uh, you guys have a nice day, and uh, thank you for listening.